Okay, we're back again. Unit 5.3, Part 3, or 5.3, Continued, Continued, Continued. And I know you're probably thinking about like me, is like, will this unit ever end? And no, it doesn't. It's like the longest unit in the, the entire book. It just keeps going. But what's funny is it's, I think that's what makes this chapter harder than it is, is because of all the examples. But the reality of it is, it's just one equation. So anyway, let's get back into this. We're to example letter I. And we've got a uh, three kilogram crate. That's a very light crate. Anyway, slides down a ramp at 30 degree. The crate starts from rest at the top. This is what makes this problem the first one that makes it stand out. Constant frictional force. So this problem, we actually have a frictional force. It even tells us what the friction is. It tells us that the friction is five newtons. Uh, it goes down and moves a short distance on the floor. Uh, use energy methods to determine the speed of ramp when it reaches the bottom floor. All right. So let's summarize this problem. Uh, there is a ramp. This ramp is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. And then we'll sit here and kind of come down across there like that. So we've got a ramp inclined 30 degrees. Uh, there's a crate sitting up at the top of it. This crate has a mass of 3 kilograms. So we've got a mass. Uh, the ramp itself is, I'm going to write that right here, 1 meter. So the ramp is 1 meter long. And it also says that there is a friction. So I'm going to put a little f. There is a frictional force of 5 newtons present on this object. So, and I'm going to see if for a second I cannot straighten up my camera a little bit so that I'm not quite so crooked, but anyway. Alright, so a frictional force of 5 newtons on the object. And that's pretty much everything that gets said in here. It wants you, us, us to find this. It wants to know the speed when the crate reaches the bottom of the ramp. Now it goes ahead and says that the speed up at the top it's sitting at rest, so that's a zero. Now, let's see what we can come back in here and do. All right, so here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead and write down this. This is the one equation we need. Work net equals delta Ke, our change in kinetic energy. All I want to know is what type of work is being done up here. No one is pushing this block. There are no springs attached to it. It is going down a hill, so since we are going down a hill, we've got work being done by gravity, and let's see, what else have we got here? It says that there is friction present in this problem, so let's come back and take a look at this. So, this says there's friction, so we've got work being done by friction. Anytime we've got friction, we've got work being done by that, it is equal to delta Ke. And believe it or not, the physics is over. This is the physics we need to solve this problem right here. That is all we need. Work done by gravity and work done by friction. We can go ahead and break this out into its biggest glory here. This would be MGY initial minus MGY final. Ooh. And then work by friction would be minus Fs. So instead of plus Fs for the friction, we write minus because it's a non-conservative force and removes energy from the system. And all this will be equal to one half mv squared minus one half mvo squared. Now, luckily, some of this will cancel out. At least two of these terms will. Now, something that's very common in these work problems is doing a little bit of trig. What it's done here is it gave us this angle and the length of this ramp. And so the reason why it's done that is for this purpose here. We'll go down here and we'll make a little triangle. We've got a 30 degree ramp. The ramp is one meter. Here's what we need to know. We need to know how tall the ramp is. And that's why it gave us this information. And so we can go directly and use sine of 30 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which in this case the hypotenuse is 1. So sine of 30 is a half. Half of 1 is 1 half. So in the case of this problem up here, 
this distance that they're, this slides is a half of a meter. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to make a Y initial and I'm going to make a Y final. My Y initial, I'm going to make zero. I just, that's just the way I always work these. And the Y final, I'm going to make negative 0.5 meters. So there's my Y initial and my Y final in this problem. So now I'm going to go and do something. Take a look at our equation. Again, this is the physics. It's all finished. MGY initial can all cancel. And the negative one half MVO square can all cancel. And all I've got to really do now is plug in numbers into this. I've got negative mass is 3 times 9.8 times negative 0.5 minus 5 times. Now, this is important. What is S in the negative FS? Well, that's the distance that the friction is applied to. Well, the friction is applied over the entire one meters. So the S is going to be one meter, and that's equal to one half the mass again, which is three times velocity square. So there's the entirety of our problem before us. And of course, as I look around the room, somebody has stole my calculator. Un momento. other uh-huh all right so enough of that musical rendition so let's see what we can do here so we've got let's see three times nine point eight times point five and the negatives cancel so that becomes fourteen point seven minus five times one is five equals one half of three so one point five v square so now we'll 14.7 minus 5 divided by 1.5. So we've got 6.47 equals V square. And now we'll take a square root of both sides. Square root of that answer. 2.5 meters per second. So there's our velocity at the bottom of that ramp. And now, again, this is what makes this stuff so bad. We've just spent almost eight minutes working one single problem. So, anyway, what made this problem stand out, though, was it was the first one with this work done by friction present in the problem. And hopefully you'll see that's not that big of a thing when the problem does something like that. See if I can find any blank paper. I'm surrounded by it right now. Uh, and see what the next problem is. How about this? I'm not even going to read the next problem. But since we are doing conservation of energy, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead and say that work net is equal to delta Ke without even reading the question. So I'm going to come back now and read the question. A child of mass 20 kilograms takes a ride on an irregular curved slide of height 6 meters. The child starts from rest, determine her speed at the bottom if there's no friction, and then it says there's a B part. If the child's speed at the bottom is 8 rather than 10.8, how much energy is removed from the system? Now we could work this problem using common sense, but I want to, I want to forego common sense a little bit. So here's the problem. It says that there is a slide of an irregular shape, and it says that the slide said the slide has got a height of six meters and it said that on top of that slide is a child and that child has a mass of 20 kilograms okay so we've got that so here's a child at the top of the slide big happy child there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this Y initial I'm gonna make zero and then I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to say that my Y final is negative 6 meters. So I'm going to keep that kind of going. And the first part it says that there's n there is absolutely no friction, there's no springs, no pushing. The only work you've got is this child is going down a hill. 
Well, that means the only work in part A is work done by gravity. And we can say that is equal to delta Ke. And now we can just come back and say, well, the physics is over. Just write your equations. One MGY initial minus MGY final equals one-half MV squared minus one-half MVO squared. And I know now the kind of irritating part is we're about to cancel most of this stuff out. Um, it sits here and says that the child's speed at the top is zero, so that means VO is zero. The child's not moving, so our initial velocity is zero. And then my Y initial is zero, so that cancels out. And now if I take a look at the equation that's remaining, the masses cancel out. So I'm left with negative GY final equals one-half V squared. So negative 9.8 times negative 6 equals one-half of V squared. And that's all there is to part A. And I think the answer will be 10.8. Let's find out. 9.8 times 6. Of course, your negatives cancel. Then we're going to end up dividing by a half. And we're going to get 117.6 equals V squared. So take a square root of that answer. And we've got 10.8 meters per second. So, whoop. There we go, 10.8 meters per second. So there is our answer. So this is in the perfect world that this child should reach the bottom of the hill going 10.8. So the second part of this problem goes, okay, what if it's not a perfect world? So it's the same problem, except this time it says that the child goes down the hill, but when they get there, their speed is just 8 meters per second. Now, we could do this problem very easily just out the top of our head. Uh, we can work it out and make it very glorious, uh, however you want to do it. Y initial, again, is zero. Y final was negative six. The child had a mass of, uh, let's see, 20 kilograms. Two different ways we could work this. One. How much energy is lost? Whenever you see a problem that says energy lost, and you want to make that calculation, it's just asking you to find work done by friction. So one way we could work this problem would be to do this. We could go back to our work net equation, delta Ke. And we were going to keep writing these over and over until you got them memorized. If your teacher is any good, they're going to make you do that. But anyway. We've still got work being done by gravity, but now this time we've also got a non-conservative frictional force. So we've also got work being done by friction, and that equals delta Ke. And now we could come back and solve for this. So we would write MGY initial minus MGY final plus work done by friction equals one-half mv squared minus one-half mvo squared. Holy cow. Once again, one-half mvo squared, that's out. mgy initial is out. And so what we're left with is just this. Work done by friction would be equal to one-half mv squared. And let's see, let's bring this term to the other side. Plus mgy final. And if you plug in your values here for M and V using V as the 8 that we've got in this problem, the 8 for a V final, you should get how much energy is lost. Well, here would also be the common sense way of doing it. All you have to do is this. The first time we worked this problem, the kid got to the bottom with a speed of 10.8 meters per second. Well, if you know your kinetic energy equation, 1 half, 20, 10.8 square, so this would end up being 10.8, oops, 10.8 square, half of 20 is 10, times 10. So this time the kid reaches with a 1166 joules of energy. So what happens if they reach the bottom only going 8 meters per second? Well, we can do the one, same thing, 1 half, 20, times 8 square, and now we can sit here, 
half of 20 is 10, 8 squared is 64, 64 times 10 is 640 joules. So now minus 640, you can see that we lost 526.4 joules which means work done by friction right here would also have to be 526.4 joules. So there, uh, we we're still able to get it even going this way as well. Um, I would encourage you at this point though to come back and solve this problem and make sure that you can solve for it this way. Um, I think that is actually the finish of me working examples. I'm going to make one more video just going over this stuff. So I'm going to call it Unit 5.3 Conservation of Energy Summary and Review. But anyway, thank you for watching.